Hey everyone, this is Sarah Tolson. I'm a developer specializing in Service Portal with GlideFast Consulting. Today we're going to talk about building configurable portal themes and I'm going to show you one of the possibilities that allow you to give your portals a really neat polish with uh, custom images for which you can easily configure the colors right from your portal record. Let's get started. This service portal is one of the demo portals I've been working on for GlideFast. What I'll be focusing on today are these images showcasing each of the categories on the knowledge base. These images are saved as SVG code rather than a static ping image. We'll go to our portal record where you can see here I've set up a number of SAS variables that control the main colors used in the portal. I'm going to paste in some alternate colors for our variables, like if I was getting ready to demo a portal to a client and wanted to show their brand colors. We'll save the record and go back to our portal page. We'll refresh and there you go. Images, header, widgets now all conform to our new branding colors. Now we're going to dive in and I'll show you how you can take this portal voodoo and use it in your own projects. To begin, let's talk about some theme level CSS. I like to put some ground level styles in my themes CSS includes for a couple of reasons. First, it saves me a ton of time. You're setting your styles once, instead of having to repeat them in every widget that uses them. Just pop in the right CSS class and you're done. Second, this keeps your widget code succinct. With your reused styles in one place, your widget code is limited to anything that particular widget needs and nothing else, instead of repeating lines of code that span over the entire theme. And lastly, accuracy. I can't tell you how many times I've had to go back and fix a widget code because I put the wrong color hex code in or a border width or some other minor style issue. Using centralized styles and SAS variables, you only have to fix and change styles in one place. Let's take a look at this in our instance. Here we've got the portal record I showed earlier with the SAS variables that hold all of the brand colors I use in this portal including primary and secondary colors with some varying shades. If we go over to our theme record, we'll scroll down and you'll see the CSS includes I've attached. The first one there controls the sidebar behavior. The middle two set our theme's typography, including the Google fonts that I have attached. This last one is the one we want to take a look at. This one controls the styles for our widgets. In this style sheet, I've got my widget styles clearly labeled. The base panel and inner classes in particular are what I use to control the outer thematic bit of each of these widgets. Let's take a look at this in our portal. The top bar and the outer shell of each of these widgets that is the same throughout is what is controlled by the CSS include. Let's take a look at this widget code and I'll show you how it looks from this end. This widget is pretty straightforward. Notice that while there's a good bit of CSS for this widget, I don't have to spell out the styles that control the outer panel's appearance. Instead, I'm putting those styles in the uh, two CSS classes from my theme CSS. Also, let me point out how I'm using those SAS variables where needed in the widget code. Again, no second guessing the color hex code, just you're boom and you're done. While the SAS variables and theme CSS include will handle the color changes for most of the portal, Usually, the images placed in a portal are pings, JPEGs, or other static image types that cannot respond to CSS changes. To change static images to reflect color changes, you would have to manually recolor the artwork and upload the images all over again, which sounds terrible if you ask me. Enter the SVG or Scalable Vector Graphic. Quick note on SVGs, there are three big reasons you see them used in web design. First, their ability to resize beautifully. There's no pixelation at any size, whether they take up the entire browser window or they're on a mobile phone, they are beautifully crisp and clear. Their support for animation and transparency, because they can be dynamically controlled via CSS, which is borderline cheating, I'm sure. Next, we're going to dive into the process of getting SVGs prepared for Service Portal and set up to behave according to the direction of your theme CSS. All right, this journey begins in vector graphics programs such as Adobe Illustrator, which is my second home. There are lots of free icon sets and vector images available on the web for use. Just make sure you have permission to use the images and you're good. In Illustrator, we'll prepare the image for code extraction before we can fine tune the code they produce. 
First off though, I recommend using a limited color palette to start. This will limit the number of classes you ultimately need in your theme CSS. Have one class for each of black, white, and varying shades of gray. I have five or six grays right now, and I always recolor my artwork to use these grays. Other classes use the brand primary and secondary colors and some shades of those colors for flavor. Now, as a side note, you can derive color shades in a couple ways if your brand doesn't provide them. You can use the SAS variable functions for lighten and darken, but I'm persnickety and like to have more control than that. Enter this site here, coolers.co. I use this website if I'm looking for color palettes or variations of shades. From here, you can easily grab different shades of a color, lighter or darker. More than that though, I'll come here to grab a demo color palette, save color combos I'm working with so I have them easily accessible, all that kind of thing. Next, while vector art is awesome for resizing, you're sa gonna save yourself a lot of heartache in the long run if you go ahead and line up your images and make sure they're all the same or similar size. If you, like me, are putting them in a series of items like service catalog items or knowledge base categories, any kind of list of these things. After that, you'll transfer the image to an individual file where this image is the only item in Artboard in the file. This is very important to make sure that you're getting code for only what you want. Then you'll export the file as an SVG, copy the code, and save the file. And now we'll take a look at that in Illustrator. Here in Illustrator, you can see that I've already got my images pretty much set to a limited color palette and a same initial size. And here I've got my image ready for transfer over to a solo file. From a new Illustrator file where I've isolated my image, we'll go to File and then select Export As. From the pop-up, choose to save your file as an SVG. Note, you'll want to make sure the Use Artboards box is not checked. If you choose to use Artboards, it's not going to let you extract the code. When the next box pops up, make sure that Minify button is unchecked. This will make your code easier to handle in your code editor and then click that show code button. Illustrator will open a text file with your code. Copy it and save your image. All right, now it's time to process the code Illustrator gave us and prepare it for our instance. I use brackets because it works and I'm too lazy to look for a better solution. Let's take a look at what Illustrator gives us. All right, here you've got three main parts to the code. Everything is within your top level SVG element there and then it lists your styles. These are the classes you'll be editing for your purposes in a bit. And lastly, all those little elements are every shape that makes up your vector graphic, every little rectangle, path, and circle. All right, first step in cleaning up this code is to get rid of some of the extraneous stuff Illustrator gives you. In this case, it's not much, but it bears mentioning. This line up here gives the SVG and ID, which if you're gonna use, you'll want to rename, as well as a handy URL you probably don't need. I keep the view box piece in, but that's about it. Aligning your CSS classes is tedious, but necessary part of this job that makes it all come together. First, we'll start out in our CSS include, where I've already got some classes outlined. I'd recommend thinking ahead and naming your classes something better than the default that Illustrator gives you, but here we are. The defaults work for me and I just built off of it. Notice that I've used our SAS variables in some of these classes. This is where we connect our images to our portal brand colors. In other places, I've just used static hex codes for colors that I don't want to change, like blacks, whites, and grays. Now, back in our SVG code, I've added the classes we're going to change in the commented out code there beside your actual classes in the style tag. From here, it's just using find and replace to change each little element's class to the one you want it to have. Where that blue arrow is down there, uh, sometimes those class names are going to cross if you're using the uh, default ones the Illustrator gives you. So I'll occasionally mark the elements I've already edited with an X so I don't undo my previous work and end up with an unholy mess. All right, after getting all those CSS classes squared away, you'll want to do a little cleaning up in your code just to finish it off and get it ready to paste over. Here you'll see the cleaning up I've done. I've eliminated the style tag, which contained classes and comments we no longer need. Another good step would be to minimize the code. This is now ready to be copied and placed in your instance. So far, I've used this SVG code in two main ways in my service portals, via instance option and via a list widget that calls from a glide record. And I'll show you guys that now. Here, I'll just go to my widget and pop my code into the instance option. This is a simple string field that I've set up, which my widget is built to translate as HTML. 
Looks like we have one little element that didn't color properly. You can see by comparing to the instance of the image I have above. My video isn't showing it, but you can easily use the code inspector to pinpoint which element isn't rendering properly and apply the correct class in your code. Second, I will show you how I set this up to show in a list of knowledge base categories. I'll go over to the knowledge base record, then find the knowledge base category I want to add the image to. Now I've added a custom field specifically for this SVG code, which the widget then calls. Pop your code in, save the record, and you're ready to go. And well, that about wraps it up. This is just a small part of the power offered in SVGs for customizing the look and feel of your service portal. There's a ton more that they can do. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at sarah.tolson at glidefast.com. Mm -hmm.